true like, authenticity would like what you said it would keep you around like just like what do you mean you know the parts of you that really make you you and when uh-huh. they shine through that's much better than being too afraid to be you mm-hmm. someone who's just too afraid to be them and they're in a box and they're not you know like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you have someone that just like can kind of like be really authentic yeah and like uh a true expression of their uniqueness their yeah. oneness right and and what you really are because yeah. if you're really qualified for a job like like i've just been in the idea of we, we called it like a war a warlike state but just being in a what would you call what, what's another t- how is a football game and a friday night service what what about them is alike because they're like in the a adversity way. Yes, that's sure. That's perfect. Yeah, the, the challenges or responsibilities. Being in a really chaotic tasks, adverse situation where I'm assigned with a specific task that will help. This the is team. your job. Yeah, do your job, <laughs> and and you should watch the team overcome. Like for, as a viewer, just mm-hmm. keep doing my task. Oh, oh, we're winning. Oh, we're making money. You mm-hmm. know, like it's going well. Mm-hmm. One of my bosses halfway through the rush, if we were crushing, you would just hear him be like, "We're doing it." We're doing it. And then when he said it, you were like, oh, shit. Okay, cool. Like, we're beating the rush. We're on top. Yeah. We're ahead. That feeling is great, right? Yeah. So just like, uh, so if you're qualified for that, I'm like in that position, like a, a true expression of me would also express my qualification, my expertise, my, but you could also be in a box that doesn't even express like, I think that's imposter syndrome makes you feel like you don't belong there. Mm-hmm. So you can't be the thing that belongs there such a weird paradox yeah 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 i guess we're, we're talking about talking about like the limitations that we kind of put on ourselves i guess because we, yeah, we were talking about the ability to be like a more true authentic version of yourself or like maybe have less less importance and significance and care about the limitations like the social limitations that you put on like if you're uh, like senioritis you know towards the end of the <laughs> towards the end of the obligation like the last mile it's like okay here we go man i could like let it all out here like it's there's no I guess maybe we project negative consequence, you know, I think it's for not a, fitting into a particular box that we constructed our own minds. You know, I just had a couple of really deep thoughts. Okay. These ones are good. Damn. Let's go. <laughs> okay. One of them is we, we do have to play a role. We do have to, like, I am a son, you know, mm-hmm. and then in we prop- have these hats for show. Right. And proper respect to that relationship. I'd like to be a good son. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be like, uh, you know, also, how do you view yourself when you're not in within the confines of relationship with anyone? So, like, is the truest you going to have a hard time acting like a son around your dad? Because maybe you don't view yourself as someone who's in these relationships at the core of your persona. And maybe you're not to some mm-hmm. degree. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I do like when, like, I'm telling you know, my stepdad or my dad about my life. And I know he, I know that he's viewing it from the perspective of someone who's taking the news from their stepson or son. Yeah, he is. And he's just, it's not just some random person telling him this, this information, right? He has that. Significant. Yeah. And my delivery and my emotions and my connection with him in that moment impacts like the, the core memories of his life. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Like, what we go through is like huge for them, you know? And so I want to like give them good memories and good, like a good life experience and how I act in those situations, like impacts that for sure. Like I miss my stepdad's 50th birthday party. And I didn't think in that time, I just didn't make the connection. It was like, I can't make it. Like I did everything I could to try to make it. Like, I'm sorry, I can't make it. But I also felt like, you know, it wasn't going to be the end of the world, whatever. But he was like really upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it made me realize just as I'm getting older, I'm like, yo, like these uh, these hats that we play also, hats, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It impacts other people. Like Matthew isn't like, I, I, I want to be like rolling through the city with my hood on and my doing your own down, thing. Yeah. <laughs> doing my own thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But like, I love these people so much and I truly care what they're life experience you know what i'm saying all that shit yeah 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 with the ability to affect their life experience so then what is authenticity you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying yeah i think i think what you're saying yeah whenever you're in relation to, to no one else is that what you said right initially to start yeah. it off i think that's 100 percent correct or like that's like a, a the root of uh, i forget what it is but 
I've heard it before. It's like there's like three masks that we're all wearing, like the the mask, like the general public mask, like the mask with your friends and family, and then like the mask when you're alone. And I think that I was I was conceptualizing that I don't know a while ago, just like thinking about it because yeah, the thought that came to my mind was uh, like about I guess in regards to myself, like um, whenever I was with like you or like my mom or like close friends, like I'd, like that person, whoever who like who I was and who I felt like I was in those relationships is I felt like who was who I was more genuinely like like to myself, you know, but I didn't really have that relationship with like everyone, you know what I'm saying? Or I didn't have that expression of myself on that mask scale of a larger social group, you know, it wasn't as easy to to shine through, but nowadays I'm pretty much like there, you know what I'm saying? I think I have like all like my, my outer mask down to my inner mask. Of course there's like hierarchies and levels and layers, but it's all pretty, it's, it's all pretty lined up, you know? That's beautiful. I remember that time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember you telling me, that I don't know I don't know exactly what you said but just the idea that when we were hanging out or we were out like with our parents or just like that you like you crush you're hilarious you know Mm -hmm. but then it's hard for you to necessarily I don't think you were telling me like I struggle with this I think it was just like you were like maybe saying you wanted to do more of that person on the outside I don't remember exactly but I I think you were telling me about the three masks Mm mm-hmm so it's crazy that that we were like younger when I remember you talking about that. Maybe college, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then now yeah, we're still talking right about it. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's true. Right. Yeah. Some shit. So, yeah, some, some thanks, man. But yeah, I think you, so I think that hits it pretty on the head or in regards to who you are with yourself, by yourself, in relation to yourself, you know? Right. It's like, what's that expression of yourself with yourself? You know what I'm in relation to yourself is crazy too, because that's like uh-huh. what integrity is. I think it's separate than what you're talking about right now. Okay, just being yourself. But the integrity part is like, when nobody's looking, what do you do? Mm. And so that's like, um, like for me personally, right now, just super vulnerably, it's just like doing work instead of avoiding work is like where my bullshit that i just am like working through and then when i'm alone too that's the thing is that like nobody can stop me from getting on the computer and doing two hours of fantasy football drafts and not writing a single email or like Mm. responding to what i gotta do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah. there's no monitor for that it's just me but i'm still being myself i love fantasy football like i'm being authentic in that moment but Mm. it's in relation to myself you said that at the end of your tag Uh who i am in relation to myself yeah and that's that part is is like Maybe it's not the whole thing, right? But it is, I think, a core of that thing. Yeah, I'm feeling it right now. It literally, I can t- I'm witness. I'm a witness. We it's touched a, it. It's a core of who you are. Yeah, I'm touching it every day of my life right now. This oh, is talking about. It's man. all on you at some point, and you have it's a all on you. lot of structure. All on you. No one's coming to save you. Hopefully, your teachers come to save you. Your parents come Hopefully to save you. Hopefully, get some you. information. Your boss yeah. comes to save you, even if it's in the form of criticism. You get a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corrective information. Right. Something to point you towards something better. Right. Somebody is like taking responsibility for you to some degree. Mm. But you can get to a point where it's Because we're like, connected like, to, to these relationships we were talking about earlier. Right. 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 Sorry, what were you going to say? Well, just some, we're getting to a point where it's like, I'm at a point right now where I, I have to, if I don't do the work I have to do, nobody's, nobody's taking responsibility for that. Nobody can. You know what I'm saying? And it's great. It's great to be in a position where that's true because the positive effects of that are like potentially overwhelmingly massive for your life. When all the responsibility is on you and if you're successful, you'll change your life for the better. Who wouldn't want to be in that situation? You know? Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody would be like, nah, I don't trust myself to... Who wouldn't bet on themselves? Right. Or who wouldn't at least want to? Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're real, real good... financially and very self-aware you're like i'll take the under on that guy (laughs) 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 like an underwriter shit like insurance yeah under (laughs) (laughs) but but i think we all wish that we could we would have the gusto to bet on ourselves yeah with confidence fucking yeah right right we all want that i want to be that version of ourselves or feel that way about ourselves because the people you identify with or love are people that do Mm -hmm. you know Everyone we're fans are of. Are the source of inspiration and motivation. Right. Like, what the fuck? Where's that come from? <laughs> How is what they're doing, like, a source of that? Like, what is that they're tapping into? I think our subconscious saying that. 
<laughs> that's what I'm trying to express to you, conscious mind. And we just get this feeling of like, I'm exhilarated. Do something like that. Do something like that. Yeah. That's what I think. I think do things, create things. The subconscious is uh, such a fucking thing, dude. It's like mm -hmm. the coding behind the computer. It's more true than the computer. <laughs> yeah, it generates the image. Right. What's, 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 yeah, what's more real, the image or the behind the scenes work that causes the image to generate? I guess they're both real, but they tell different <laughs> stories. Yeah. So I want to know. Dude, two different languages. Yeah. Or two different, not like, I guess, yeah, like uh, communication or kind of like languages. Because the subconscious has intuition and intimations that aren't aware to us yet. Like the, the subconscious will think it has an answer to the problem that the brain that you haven't consciously realized and maybe even try to tell you through a dream. Or maybe like you're not processing something and then your subconscious kind of already knows it to be true because it's kind of more aware than you are. It's yeah, like, been around longer than you. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 It's a Rick Ross oh. thought. How long has that subconscious been there? Oh. Man, but I don't want to get too far away from uh, talking about the mass stuff. Yeah, the mass. The limitations that we put on ourselves. That's what really what so we're like talking jobs. about. like jobs. We're talking about jobs and stuff and being like the way you're not going to talk to the coaches the same way you talk to the players, talk to your friends, talk to everybody. We kind of... So it's roles we accept, right? All or right. rules and the limitations. Who you are to some degree is the... I'm talking the, about senioritis. Like giving a fuck about those things. <laughs> it's a good and a bad thing. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The right amount of give a fuck. The right amount of Tom Cruise. Hey, so Because you need to care. You need to care. You need to have to care. Something. I mean, yeah, I would say that Maverick cared about flying that fucking plane, but he also was just like whew, doing pass bys and shit. Like fuck you. But I don't think you should be like that per se. But I just think that there's some like Harry Potter had some give a fuck. Like there's a that's a motif in a lot of stories that you gotta at least be able to play by the rules a little bit. Yeah. Well, more okay. Well, we're getting off track from yeah, what okay. I'm talking about specifically. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, because the the willingness to break the rules for the following the truth or the embedderment of the spirit or embodying the spirit of the rules that's a different kind of that. Those are true too, but that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But just I'm talking more about just who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. I think that a true expression sometimes. When someone's personality shines through that mask that they have to wear, that's like, I think that those are the moments that are appreciable or like feel real and authentic and yeah. something, something's there. Right. Yeah. You can feel that. Like, I guess even in the restaurant, whenever you're talking to like tables, there's like an obligatory, mo like a, a push or tag in that obligation. It's like, it's, it's literally, literally their job to like be talking to you. But then there's like, yeah, moments where you can like really connect with someone or like say something or whatever, you know, just like hit a real moment of authenticity where through the, that social mask, through the mask of me having to be this thing and the mask of you like observing me be this thing. And or like we're all watching, you know, we're all watching each other be each other in front of each other and in front of ourselves. Yeah. You know, so like Go all on. four of those things are happening at the same time. And then there's like a moment where all four of those things line up. And then it's like you're really being yourself through that mask and I'm really being myself through this mask. And it's like, oh. That feels good. Or it's like a, you know, I could feel something there. There's something there. That's nuance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's deep. <laughs> Connecting. You're feeling a connection. Mm -hmm. Feeling mm -hmm. something real. Yeah, that true expression of yourself through all the limitations that we're mentally putting on ourselves. You know? <sighs> That's heavy. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, it feels. You can feel it. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I heard Joe Rogan talking with that. Ari Maddie podcast. Uh -huh. Highly recommend. It's great. Nice. At I'll one point, they're talking about how Joe has this idea that if you're out with your homie and y'all are like, he was like, me and Brian Callen want to go out to the woods, super deep Montana woods, very remote, very far out, camp in the middle of winter and chase this elk. And we're just going to be in cold, wet ground, sleeping bag, fire, middle of nowhere, no cell service. And I know we're going to have a good time. Let's fucking go. I know. It, yeah, I asked Brian if he's down. He's like, fuck yeah. Let's do it, bro. I'm into that. Let's go. It's like, no <laughs> reservation. Let's go. This <laughs> is Joe Rogan asking you. Who was he asking? What was his name? Brian Callen. Brian Callen. Okay. They're okay. homies. Okay. He's the gym teacher from the 80s show. 
Uh, Gym teacher from the 80s show? Yeah, that show about the guy who's like the camera kid. He's a kid in the 80s. The Goldbergs. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's the gym teacher in the Goldbergs. Okay. But he's also like an actor and a stand-up comedian and been friends with Joe Rogan for like a decade. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Martial arts guy. Cool dude. Has his own podcast. Mm -hmm. But Joe was saying, what about this? Come hunt to elk with me in the middle of bumfuck (laughs) nowhere in in the freezing winter. Mm -hmm. And they were just like down because ultimately because he's like, I can be with Tony Hinchcliffe in a shitty motel in a shitty town in Arizona. And we will just be laughing our ass off. Like, we'll be having a good time. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have that connection with someone like you're talking about, where it's just like, you're able to shed all of the, you're just like being authentically each other. That's maybe when you can just like have a good time wherever you're at, because you're not having to wear a mask when you're out in public, just being you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's super valuable because if we can just be us, that's so freeing, bro. It's so freeing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Maybe it's like the ability to express yourself truly and fully like that. It's like a, the ability to have like a really, truly blessed life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Really doing, like really just being that, like us from the core outwards, whatever that is, that truest expression of yourself, whatever you can. I think I posted a little thing about it on my story the other day, but it's like the Ikigai or some Japanese, I think some Japanese sort of philoso- or, uh, philosophy, phraseology that's like you take like what you're good at what you love to do what you can get paid for and what the world needs and like you can combine those things into one thing and i think that's like your truest expression of yourself would line up with that you know yeah whatever you're predis- predisposed to whatever your interests are that's like a perfect purpose yeah mm-hmm. you'd have to believe that that's real for everybody to really or you could say that you could systematically find something that i'm good at that like fucking venn diagram chart for everything and just like really analytically go at it i should be a painter <laughs> it's the best for everybody it's the best you know what i'm saying that's it that's what who knows who knows that's what the passion is bro i don't know i, I agree with you right? i don't disagree at all yeah. I, I think that shit because yeah i don't know it's it's we it, spoke in the podcast previously about life could be tailor made for you yeah and i think that's the same idea that you're talking about here yeah there is a perfect purpose for you if you're if you're able Jeremiah to express yourself, Jeremiah 29:11, bro, I got yeah. a plan for you. Come on, it's hard for me not to get religious. I've, I've been fighting the urge. If you're able to express yourself, you know, what I'm saying fully, without shame, without the filters you put on everything, you know, what I'm saying what would allow you to do that? You know, what I'm saying it's like being the fucking the Holy Spirit. Yeah, knowing that it's I I can feel that way. I can feel that way because someone died for me to feel that way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah we're bringing it in well here's here's my biggest thought about everything we're talking about uh-huh. is that we have to wear these hats but ultimately we want to be free like we're talking about but why would we wear these hats then and it's because we are in relation to jesus christ we are in relation to god like mm. we're a, a a child of god who's been shown the way to be and the way to be is through like perfect self-sacrifice as good as you can through a possibly manage yeah through a system which is designed for you to pursue salvation and also granted eternal grace through that process because of the story of the of how you should be. It's complicated, but it's a, mm. like a perfect axiom to have a reason to be trying to do your best all the time. To, it gives you a way out of your shame and out of your guilt, but also doesn't let you off the hook. You know? Yeah. It keeps you pointed on that North Star, and it tells you that it's not really possible, but the person that made it possible for you to even try died so that you could try. So what do you think you should do? And mm. I'm like, I think I should try. You know, it's mm. perfect. It's the game. Yeah. In my opinion, as far as just a axiom to live your life on, it's what else are you going to do? Are you going to be in relation to no one? Are you not going to wear any hats for anybody ever? You're just going to be this, this, yeah, yeah. this thing that you, I guess, are designing, but also becoming. We have all this predisposition. Like you have a lot of, I personally have a lot of, it's not like a, naturally matthew just eats healthy that's not what happens like if just a wild matthew appeared (laughs) i had to like work on that shit you know what i'm saying yeah so you have to be i guess what you are and what you're working on what you are and what you're working on Mm -hmm. and that's true but like it's not enough i don't think there's more relation there there's more i guess you see we're talking about all the roles and all the it's all mental it's all the mental things that we put on ourselves but within that there's the Familiar relations, I guess, is kind of what we're talking about, too. Like, yeah, the familiar relations and also being a partner to somebody else. That's a big sacrifice as well. Because you're literally just, like, sacrificing 
any opportunity to be anything else that you want because you have to be with the, like in accordance with and limited to this thing mm. in spirit. True. Right? In theory. You are. Yeah. So the entanglement of the relationship, it yeah, is the yeah. truth. Yeah, we're all just universes here interacting with each other. Oh. Heesh. These are Ross thoughts. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Seriously. Ross thoughts. I don't know. So, there's so much going on. There's so much going on, y'all. If you're going to be the truest version of yourself, you uh -huh. would like to be a good son or daughter. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want to disappoint our parents, naturally. Yeah, you, you don't want to be... No one wants to be... The truest expression of themselves isn't to be like a fucking ruler or like an asshole, you know? Like a dictator. Right. You know? You might think so. But then mm -hmm. take a tab of acid, and then maybe you're not so sure anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Something like that. We were debating that last night over beers, so that's why it's on the head. But Okay. What was the debate? Like, how much does... Mega multivitamins? How much capacity does mega multivitamins have to tell you truths about yourself that you need to know and actually change your character through that process? How much does it? What was the question exactly? What's its, what's its, capacity, oh, what's its capacity, to capacity to actually to? transform? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. You're taking me straight back to where? A lot. To a specific time. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I gave two anecdotes about, you know, the first trip I ever had, I really felt like I, the lesson I learned was the only way you could, I was worried that I wasn't going to have the life I was going to have. And then I, I realized that being the person who's worried he's not going to have the life he's going to have is the only way that I, I'm not going to just be myself and have the life that myself is going to have. Mm -hmm. If I'm just myself and I have a passion for these things and I'm pointed at that direction. You don't have a disproportionate amount of worry in your lens. Right. Then I can just be the thing that I desire to become. That yeah. process is natural. Mm -hmm. A tree grows into a tree. A flower blooms. Exactly. A flower's not like... Worried. Come on! Yeah. Bloom, bitch! I, I don't want to be a beaver. I don't want to be a beaver. I want to be a flower. Please. So, like, that's not... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He doesn't even know it's a flower. Yeah. Necessarily. I don't fucking know. Who knows? The, the way it presented By, to me was I'll, like... It was like I saw a wolf and I saw a dog. And the wolf was like everything I wanted to be. And the dog was like the normal-ass life I was afraid I was going to have. Mm. And that was like, you know, an immature way to think about life as a 20-year-old. But that's just like where I was at. I was in college, you know, it was a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. Even getting your degree in something isn't maybe what you want to fucking do. You know what I'm saying? Of course. But like, you know. Who the fuck knows at any point? It takes a while. Some people don't know what they want to do until they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s. Or don't f stumble into the thing that they were meant to do, I guess, potentially. Or whatever blows them up. I don't know. I guess I've heard, I've seen, I've heard a couple stories about that, about fashion designers or people like designers or uh, like engineers or whoever, you know. Hitting their come up later in life. Yeah. So yeah. You never know. What the fuck? You're, you're 20? Like 18? Steve, Steve you don't know shit about fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, dude. Hopefully you're following your personal... Just feeling around the best you can. Trying to be a decent expression. Yeah. What are they calling the alchemist? Your, your, own, your own personal dream. Your own story. Your own navigation feeling process. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you're following that. Because that's taking you up the roller coaster for your whole life, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, Hopefully. so so the capacity for change. What was the what was the verdict? What was the consensus? Well, with the dog stuff, I uh, it was I took away. It was like all of this was want and fear, like the life I really wanted to have, this thing I was clinging to, and I felt like I was the dog, and I let go of the want and the fear, and just accepted what I was, and then I the the dog that I was turned into a wolf. It was like a dog's a wolf. A dog isn't a want a wolf. That's a, mm. that's a want, someone, something that wants to be a wolf isn't a dog. A dog's just a, the, what is a wolf now? And then it was like, the moon was telling me that. Mm -hmm. And it was a lady. Yeah. And she was like. Moon's a lady. Son's a fella. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that crazy? That's awesome. That's crazy. How do you know that? How do we, how do we stumble on that? Yeah. That's crazy that you, that you talked to or had an experience in the realm and then talked to a, a piece of the sky, a piece of the universe, and it was expressed as feminine. And then I did the same thing. It was expressed as masculine. Just talking to the sun. Just like, man, thank you <laughs> for heating me up. It was like having the, it was, I remember it was like February 
and it was chilly, you know, it wasn't cold and we were in hoodies and it was sunny outside. Thank goodness we're in Texas. So it wasn't super, super cold, but it was February, winter time. Sun was peering through the leaves. And then whenever the sun's like rays were on me, I was like, oh, it feels nice. And like I actually expressed that to the sun in my, in the, in that realm, in that thought space. And then he responded <laughs> and it was a he for sure. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Had a little mini conversation. Bananas. 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 He was like, yeah, you're a, uh, you're just a, uh, the way I'm warming you up, I do that all the time, all the time, everywhere, for everyone, when it's their time, you know? Yeah. It's like, and you're just you. Just focus on doing you. It's like, oh, man, I'm just me. That's all I got to take care of. Thank God. <laughs> Thank goodness. We're leaving. All I got to do is take care of this this small little thing versus like a sun, <laughs> like a star in, the, in our Milky Way galaxy or whatever. Bananas. It's like, whoa. That's just what I felt. It was just... It's just my experience. You know what I'm saying? It's so crazy. Yeah. You only have your It could be like true across or whatever because that, um, that's definitely a way that the moon and the sun have been expressed through time and through a lot of stories and like abstract symbolisms like masculine and feminine and many variations. But I literally just felt that in a conversation, like in my own life, like regardless of if anyone had told me any of those other symbolic meanings, historically symbolic meanings. It's like in my own personal experience, that's what I would say. I think the sun is a man or like masculine energy, whatever that is. And then that's just like happens to be a common trope across thousands and thousands of years. As long as we've been talking. Yes. You know what yes. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I felt that. And you felt the same thing on the opposite side. Same thing. Mm-hmm. She was being sweet to me about it. <laughs> I was like, don't worry about it, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. like, you are. What you want to be is what you that that's what defines what you are, silly. Like a dog is a wolf, silly. Like you don't have to be so like you're okay. Shh. You're okay. Shh. Like that was like the energy behind it. And it was soothing cuz I'm like lying on a picnic table like this go is flying through the universe, bro. And then the moon was like right there. It was crazy. Oh Christ. Yes. So, yeah. That's a piece of my personal. So then, you know, I'm bringing that to the table as because it's like when you bring it up, I feel like people want to know, you know, I try to because it's hard to explain what's happening there. So I'm like, I was like out of reality, but also like in reality and within this dreamlike trance like state, lifelike things were happening. Like the moon was talking I mean, that's not lifelike, but someone talking to you and communicating with you is lifelike, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just like mm-hmm. I was having a daydream, but it was kind of projected in front of me instead yeah. of being like in my head exchange information just exchanging information yeah so it's like it was like a lifelike situation in a dream where it's like doesn't seem out of place almost because you're in the dream yeah and you could i kind of accepted it at some point i was kind of and then to accepted it i remember being like what if these mushrooms are gonna poison me what if i'm allergic to these <laughs> oh, no. mega multivitamins i'm and, done i'm done for and it's just like i'm getting cold what if this is my body getting really still and i remember feeling like I'm out in like the woods ish area and I was like if I were to be allergic to these mushrooms, I feel like God would just drop a spider on my shoulder that would bite me. And that poison would be the perfect thing to counteract these mushrooms right now. <laughs> I am so sure that nothing is about to stop me actually. It's like it divine intervention will occur now. And like I accept that. And with that confidence, I just like went fully into the trip. It's probably the best one, the easiest one I ever had in that sense. That's cool. One moment of anxiety extinguished by one idea. And then I was just good for the rest of it, bro. <laughs> just tomahawked on yourself. Yeah. Mentally, spiritually. Like, no, you're fine. Yep. Trust me. It's like, got it. <laughs> Heard, coach. Heard. <laughs> Which is not how my system usually operates. Going full force. Yeah, yeah. So that shit was cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so there is a capacity for change. I think just personally on my own level of experience, I could express and I would attest to thumbs up. It does do some change and it lasts. Yeah. <laughs> it sticks. That bitch be sticking. It, it'll change you. It, it, it's crazy. But then yeah, y'all are talking about that in regards to, I guess we, we meant, brought this up in regards to the truest, fullest expression of someone's self. I don't think they want to be a ruler or a dictator or a fucking asshole. Right. 
Right. In that in that state, I think you would that that version of yourself that's working through like I was working through my shit or like the the really vulnerable person of yourself that's like a the truth like your soul no no ego i think that no way no way you want to do those things i think you're hurt or misaligned a, yeah just have a warped misconception of your whatever you project the world to be or you think it is or what thing it should be based on whatever's going on in your in your fucking sphere in your in your universe cuz we're all in a fucking we're all in our own fucking world guys everyone is in their own world yeah completely separate from yours completely different completely different it's like whoa you have to have respect for that but like we just cross paths with each other in the in the fucking matrix or in the in the runescape you know so we just log in it's like all right we're crossing through each other or like we're interacting into, into this thing so you have to have respect for that i think that's, that's where that comes from like the idea that you wouldn't be like a ruler or a dictator in your truest expression of your self no ego involved it's like because you're because you, the, the truth is that we're all interacting together we're all fucking commingling in this crazy crazy expression of whatever the hell's really going on no one really knows so we're all just we have to have respect for that we have to like give people the opportunity to be that self a version of themselves as well or try to create an environment where that's propagated and promoted whatever ideally that's what we want, right? That's what we'd appreciate. That'd be nice. The truest version of ourselves. Yeah. Would appreciate that. And, and so in pursuit of the... That's what I'm saying. If everyone could align mm -hmm. with that, we'd all... It would fit together like a fucking pyramid. Like every stone just... Because we don't have malintention. No one wants to do these things, you know? At their truest level. Yeah, no one's proud of that shit. Or no one's going to watch that film again in the afterlife and be like... Or like, you'll have a true expression or you'll have a true interpretation of it then. True. Sure. You know, having to watch yourself, watch all your low lights. It's like, oh, that's going to be some tough film to digest. You think those things are avoidable? What do you mean? Our low lights. The low lights of humans. <laughs> Just your worst moments. Maybe. I don't know. I There it is. Yes. <laughs> I think God's grace. Maybe. Yeah. God's just the just the intimation to do better in one moment. Just a just the pursuit of a better life in one second to take you right instead of left. But your predisposition is probably to hit all those lefts. Mm. And sometimes you can get yourself out of there. Yeah, but maybe if we... I don't know. I don't know. Because maybe then there's no game. Is there no... Or not game, but is there no movie? Is there no adversity to overcome? Do we just win all the time? And like, There's no story if we just win all the time. Not in like the social setting of drama, but in your personal legend of learning, of like pain and creating strength. Experience, wisdom. Yeah, all that shit. How would you... I guess the constraint is that we're already like fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So I guess, yeah, are we like, is that by design? Maybe. Is that something I did? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> the <Yeah>. same maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Am I upset about it? I don't know. I don't think so. Big trust. Big trust. Big trust. <laughs> it's all I got. Trust the process. It's all I got. That's yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, we're too deep for the intro. We're right out now. here, dog. We're going crazy <laughs> right now. We, we yeah, we, we were going off before we even, we even jumped in. Yeah, because the authenticity stuff is. I, I think that I'm. It's obvious to me that I'm a better version of Matthew if I get the inhibitors off the aunt authenticity. Yeah, I think there's. So I think all this started from you talking about, or before we even started on the pod, we were talking about the ability for you to fully express yourself to our boss in a moment of like a true. How you would, would how, how you would have responded to him is how you would have responded to me or to Luke or to Steve or you know what I'm saying to like people like on that level of mask with yourself right you know what I'm saying or even to like yourself right you know what I'm saying if you if you like if you hit a or whatever you know what I'm saying even no, you, I'm with you right yeah a true authentic expression of you like regardless of whoever's out there and it happened to be like our boss so it was like that was able to come through and then we started talking about yeah like the the boss relationship like limits the way that we express ourselves and also like the way that shame and like our construction of how we feel about ourselves and like who we are what's going on and like our guilt and what we feel like our low vibration emotions how how much of those low vibration emotions are inhibiting our expression of ourselves at our truest level right you know what i'm saying Authent authenticity and like love are like super high up you know what i'm saying where i have noticed that 
if you could present the authentic version of yourself, that's usually the thing that would get you the result that you're looking for. Mm. Like that's all it takes. You just mm. got to be you. Mm. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and just like we get in the way of just being you sometimes. Yeah, we we we, we get in the way of us, or we put like the limits on ourselves. Yeah, we do through our interpretation and our mental capacity. That's the thing to overcome. That's Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we're touching it. Yeah, we're touching it. Right we're like, dude. <laughs> Because I was listening to a pastor talk about shame. Yes. But he was talking about it in a way that kind of reframed the way, like, I was able to, like, open yeah. up my... He killed that. It was fire, he right? He killed it, yeah. I, I reframed my what I felt shame to be or what I identified it as and then was realized it's more of, like, yeah, if you just ask yourself, like, what am I... You know, what are some, what's something I'm ashamed of to the point where like it's affected my life style choice or who I've become or like, is there anywhere along the way, something that I like can identify as I was ashamed of that and it made me be like this. And then can you take that off? And if you took it off, what would that feel like? And who could you be? And what inspiration would come from then? You know, because mm. sometimes it's like hard to be like, if I reimagine how I think about this thing, then my my thought space will be so different that I'll create new thoughts. It's like you can't even you can't even really imagine that, you know? That's like yeah. true growth. Yeah, it's a place you don't have access to right now. But it happened to me and I was like, whoa. And then it became translatable and I'm like, this is crazy. You just gotta take this film off yourself mm -hmm. and just like kinda own it, I guess, but also like be humble and also just like be repent. Yeah, you know, like acknowledge it. True, true. Look at it through an objective lens, which it would allow you to have, because if you don't look at it through an objective lens, you wouldn't be able to even feel the shame. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I guess, right? That's how like psychopaths continue on doing crazy psychopathic shit right. Right, to people, right? Right. They just don't feel shame or guilt or a, any type of way about treating people in any type of way. You know? It's just like, you can't just be treating people like that. You know what I'm saying? You're watching Game of Thrones, or like, you'll see it. But like, there's people in life like that who are just like, they'd be treating people like crazy. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't just be doing that. But whatever, whatever allows you to do that is the lack of shame or guilt or an objective lens to view, view Personal this behavior. intermingling of universes <laughs> together. Yeah. Whatever that is. You're so right. So it's like, yeah, it's like a... It's important to be able to feel guilt and shame. Yes. But to have it dictate your personal outcome, personal belief systems, to, to let it... to Is your character defined by what you're ashamed of? Too much, yeah. Yeah. Just, just a disproportionate proportion. Like, just what? Personal, it's hard. I, can just, I, can, I can't... I have what happens and then I try to make it translatable for everybody. Like I'm some kind of author. But sometimes it's just easier for me to tell you like my thoughts. But then I realized that not finishing school... And then working in a restaurant, it felt just like a natural kind of punishment. Because like working in the restaurant's a little bit tougher. You're working longer shifts, later nights. Uh, it's more chaotic. It's a crazy system. No one goes to school for this shit. It's a lot of people that slip through the cracks. If you're working in the wrong place, it's crazy people working with you. It's like being a comedian. <laughs> it could be crazy. It's crazy, bro. There's some wild people in that industry, mm -hmm. which is cool. I mean, fuck it, dude. I, I, I got love for everybody. And I'm happy I got to see some some different walks of life. But I don't necessarily want to do that forever. Like, I, I, I was like, I think I... That's, I like, that's a common trope even in that industry, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of people are just doing it temporarily between jobs or between, like, when they're going between, like, semesters or as, like, they're trying to be an actor or whatever, you know? It's a super common trope. Hell yeah. Pay the bills. Yeah. Pay your bills. Get it done. Fire. But me personally, it felt like a penance almost. Mm. Like um, I'm repenting of my sins for having failed what would be the my mom's dream for me or the American dream. Like the path the I should have taken. Right. So I'll work a little harder and grind it out and be busy and have bags under my eyes and do the shit, whatever. Where The, the apron always felt like a dress to me. <laughs> so in my own mind, I'm like, I'll wear the skirt. I'll wear the dress. I'll put it on. It's I'll fine. do the dance. But then once I removed the shame of, I'm like, this is just my life, yo. Like, what if I'm an accountant right now in that life that's the path? And then, you know, I end up finding my dreams at the bottom of the rainbow in my personal life because I followed the fucking path less trodden, you know? 
Yeah. Well, am I gonna be fucking mad about that? Like, no, <laughs> dog. I'm feel ashamed of that or guilty about that mm-hmm. or like feel less than because of that. Like, fuck that, bro. Uh-huh. And then removed that, and then I felt differently about everything else. I was like, oh, now that I don't feel that. I'm kind of like, wow. You know, what was I doing back then? The fuck was I doing? It didn't have to be that way. I didn't have to feel that way about myself. I didn't have to put myself in those boxes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put on those limiters yeah. or those mental barriers but at the same time we got to do what we got to do so it might have been like literally perfect mm-hmm. for the amount of time that i had to do it so i had the realization at the point that i had it so i could feel differently about it now you know what i'm saying it's like and talk about it on here <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then it's like what if i told you that every time you fucked up it was perfect it's like that's a weird thought right yeah or it'll end up being perfect for you right in the long run whenever you're able to look back on it you're exactly who and where you need to be right now perfect timing yeah it's perfect it's right there think about it that way now though like for the for the rest of the day like go forward with that perspective you know yeah allow that to become true you yes know what yes fucking yes bro <laughs> yeah. and that's transformative yeah and i feel like okay now this is what i couldn't communicate in the beer drinking session about the mega multivitamins okay my capacity to think about my life like that, I don't think I had that before I took those. Mm. It's not necessarily just like I took it and I realized, oh, man, I got to be neater. We're all one. Yeah. <laughs> wow, guys. <laughs> I was like that, too. <laughs> that happens a little bit for sure. Yeah. But but you get it. I wasn't. Yeah. It's not all like just like I was at A and now I'm at B and I'm kind of a hippie. It's like I, my... My awareness of my subconscious. The my capacity to think. Yes. Expands. Way broader. Way different. It's a different game. You know, it's like playing Pokemon, bro. Like then finding out about the Ivies and Eevees and you're like, oh shit, run it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's po- there are Pokemon that are stronger than other Pokemon naturally. Yeah. Wild Pokemon in the, in the wild. I didn't even know about stats. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know about this until you told me all of it. Crazy. But yeah, same. I, I agree with you. And I think that's maturation does that to you. They say a boy's frontal cortex doesn't close until they're 25. Yeah, yeah fully developed till later, 25. That'll do it to you. You go through some hard times, that'll do it. Maturation, you know. Mm-hmm. It'll happen where you, like, have more perspective and become more aware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, man, I, I really think that there's a connection between. And I think that's why we evolved the stoned ape theory, if I believed it at all. It's because I think that I can see a translation where your capacity to think and be aware and understand time and understand yourself as like a concept becomes way more developed if you were to take some mega multivitamins. Take this little trip. Which is also why I think if you were a fucking tyrant and you took a bunch and you gained that self-awareness and perspective and understanding of yourself, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that shit. When I don't think so. In the truest expression of you, man, in the truest expression, not like a hippie, man, but the truest you, man. We're all hippies, man. Let them out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> Open your mind, man. But here's the other thing: is in this life, I do feel like I'm a fucking gladiator to some degree, and maybe I feel like that because I was like that in a past life. I don't know. Gladiator in what way? I just like, like, <clears throat> like what well, I was talking to my boss about, where it was just like he was like. I was, we we're just in the middle of the shit storm, and I was just like, "You good?" He's like, busy night at a restaurant. Yeah, he's like, "Oh yeah, I live for this," and I was just like, "Fuck yeah!" And then he was like, "I like Conor McGregor." Ah, you know what I'm talking about? And I was like, "I live for this." <laughs> like that, I am that too. Like that thing is. I know what that feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Or like I feel like that in the in the in the thick of the shit sometimes too, especially when you be hitting bucks on some shit, bro. Or it's like you just, I don't know. There's ways to hit bucks in any capacity, any game that you're playing. Whatever that is, basketball it happens to be shooting a basket or ball into a basket, making it. That is a bucket. That's how you get bucks. You do that a whole bunch of times in a whole bunch of different ways. Dunking on people, hitting threes, step backs, nasty shit, being nasty. That's what that is, getting bucks. Yep. But that translates to any and every outlet there is. Yes, it does. And in a restaurant, it looks like <laughs> you have a queue of obligations and you just hit everything like perfectly in stride and just knock everything down, just like boom, 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 boom. And then you don't forget a thing. And then you keep moving in the in the flow of the night. And you're just like, yes, yes, yes. You know? It's the best. Bucks. I was literally talking about that last I night. I love too. getting that shit. There's when it's because it's like playing Tetris on ultra expert mode sometimes. 
It's mm-hmm. just like your cue is like things that all kind of have to happen. And then it's all like a difficult. It's like some are just like blue, 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 blue. You're just like doo, 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 doo. easy. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like red, purple, red, purple, red, purple. And like the color being varying in difficulty. Yeah. And then, you know, and you got to go and then you just like clear it. Yeah. It feels crazy. You're like, I'm a, I'm a madman. I'm David Beckham <laughs> I'm in the going field off. of dreams. Yeah. The theater of dreams. Getting bucks. Getting bucks. Getting bucks. Getting bucks is real. It feels great. Right. So maybe it's... I over identify with that thing. Maybe I'm like, I am the thing that likes to do that. Maybe in just reality, I, anybody would enjoy doing that. Getting bucks. Getting bucks feels sure great. Sure feels great. <laughs> For everyone, anyone. What are you doing with your life? How much of the life is just a blank canvas to do what you want to do? Mm, I don't know. I think a lot of it. I think maybe all of it. <laughs> I was going to say, that that's, what, that's my, what I was leaning towards. It's like Maybe the whole thing. Maybe the whole thing. But you do have, you're given some things for sure. You're given like your family and your height. <laughs> you know, you have some limitations for sure that are just embedded into the game. But within that, you have your your mind. You know, you have that thing. And that's like the source of all things. You can create anything. In the truest expression of you, you would create whatever you're meant to be created. Or whatever is meant to be created through you. You create it. So then why do we have the other yeah, the other mask oh I'm just trying to take it back. That that's take it back now. Th- that's all. the first mask. That's yeah. that's just me with my boys, close, mom, relationships, dad, chilling. They know who I am, I know who they are. We also have this like social mask because we're social creatures and just to be respectable of everyone else and all their deep lives. Courteous. We're not just gonna throw our whole personality around all the time. Mm-hmm. Sophisticated. Nuanced behavior. Nuance. Back in Game of Thrones times, I don't give a fuck. What's our third mask? Oh, it's like the... I guess, yeah, those are all three. Or who you are when you're yourself, and then who you are with your family. Close, and then, yeah. Who you are in public. I guess, like, yeah, I guess, and even the public can vary as well on levels of, like, from, like, your mom's relationship, like, your best friend, to literally a stranger. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then I guess the third mask falls somewhere in there. Maybe ideally you can get it like pretty close to the second mask and it's like pretty much just like, just like boop, boop, boop. That's what I always thought. When I heard this theory, I was like, I think you should be trying to make all of them <clears> one <throat> mask. Mm-hmm. So you're just yourself everywhere. Yeah. I think, but we do have to wear these roles and I want to, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to be myself, but I'm not trying to treat my dad necessarily exact, exactly like he's my bro. Even though we do have a relationship where we are kind of like bros with each other, but he's like still my dad. You know what I'm saying? Of course. It's like, yeah. I don't, yeah, there's the respect levels and respect stuff Respect like to that. that. Yeah. yeah. Respect your family. <clears throat> or just like the relationships. Whatever the hierarchy is or whatever, you know. Maybe not even the hierarchy, but the lay of the land. So I think that just like yourself, your, so how do you define yourself? One of those definitions is yourself in, in, ref, uh, in reference to yourself or in respect to yourself. How did you put it? I think that, in yeah. relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In relation to yourself. Then it's like who you are, which is made up of who you are in relation to yourself, is also made up with or or becomes like part of that is who you are in relation to other people too. Yeah. And I think also this ties in. It's a Jay Shetty thought from back in the day. But he's like, I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am who I think that you think that I am. Like living in the perception, like who you are to yourself and then who you think other people think that you are. And then playing that out or incorporating that into who you think you are. We decided to dead that, right? Fuck all that. Kill that, yeah. Dead. Uh, not interested. Big dead. We ain't listening to that. <laughs> That's how you be, yeah, man. I mean, I've always had this idea that like, or not, I haven't had this idea. This is not a, being an asshole. Not a rude way, but I've heard some people say that like a person that is a boss just acts like a boss the whole time that they're like working in the company. So if you're like a person who's a worker and then you become a boss but you're a boss who's acting like a worker you can't be a boss but if you're a worker who acts like a boss it might be just easier to make you a boss and then if you're a boss that's acting like a boss that's what we're looking for <laughs> yeah there and you I, go. i've seen some company i've seen some decisions get made i've heard of this stuff it, it's real like across the board my entire life and so it's just like then in my mind i'm like you know i'm a boss like i'm just gonna be that oh. way oh. Ross you know 
boss. <laughs> That's it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a yeah. boss and a, and a good boss. What's that mean? Well, what are you gonna say also say what were you gonna it, say? A, a good boss is what? My thought was like a two a, like a heads and a tails. It's like okay. I'm a boss and a good boss works as hard as the as the janitor works. That's like what harder. Yeah, right. Right. Just to prove a point, right? Yeah. yeah. At least as hard as the hardest worker in the room. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's how hard the boss should be working, you know? Yeah, and I feel like yeah, no yeah. job is too big for the boss. Like janitor level, well, I'm willing to clean the floors. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so that's how I tried to approach it as like, I'm a good boss and a boss would do anything for his team. He just make it work, just keep it going. And then also like that that means like being responsible, making good decisions fighting for the best like the thing we're all fighting for just being a leader fighting for that shit hard going after it what's the objective here i'm I'm holding myself responsible i'm holding you responsible i'm trying to keep us all accountable i'm trying to keep us aimed at that thing i'm aware of the nuances of the fact that we're all people but i'm still just like that goal's got to get done you know Mm. i'm not trying to boss people around i'm not trying to have people look at me on a fucking pillar i'm just really trying to like take the most responsibility out of anybody in the room for getting this job done Get the most bucks at any cost necessary, <laughs> yeah. aka. Yeah, I think that's how yeah, define me. Like what a what that means. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And also to know that, like, yeah, as I guess also tied with that, that I actually want to run my own business someday. That like right now, I'm literally like the person that would run their own business. I'm that person working for someone else right now, mm-hmm. and I'm adapting and I'm wearing the right kind of social mask for it. But when you get to that authentic level of me, that when you're gonna talk to me. That's who's going to talk back. You don't have to talk to me like that, but that's who's talking back at you. Yeah. And like to just hold that, you know what I'm saying? So that way I'm not a worker who can't become a boss. That's what, that's the story at least of what, <laughs> how I perceive that idea. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a lot of like, who are you at that first layer? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are you on that mask one in relation to yourself? I want to be that boss. Or take the most responsibility. That's what we're, I think. That's what we're called to be. There's something right about that, you know. Because what the fuck else are you gonna do? Anything else but that is like what? What are you doing? You know. At least a little bit. There's there's some like fun and silliness and joy that can to come out of life for show. Some comedy, some laughter. But at the end of the day, we need to be fucking getting after it. That's, that's why I think in my ideal life that I'm trying to construct in the middle of constructing right now. It's like you wake up early. You get shit fucking done all day while the sun is up. If the sun is up, you're fucking going at it. You're going at it. And then when the sun's going down, you're winding down. You're going home. You're eating your food. And then you're watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> and, then you're, and then you wake up early and you do it all again. Yeah. Just fucking go with Get after, get after, get after. And then you wind down. And the fucking... idea that ties to... You've been telling me you're living motifically and thematically on that line right there. Yeah. Where it's just like, I wake up and I attack the day. I just start going, bruh, <laughs> and, until there's nothing left to do. And I start it, slaying dragons, bruh. <laughs> I wake up and I grab my sword and I start slitting dragons' throats, bruh. Like level five dragons, I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. getting ready. <laughs> yeah, and you've been talking about it like you're John Wick. The first day he wakes up and he's uh, hit snooze on the alarm. And then the next day he wakes up and the alarm's going off and it pans to the bed and he's already up. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of energy you've been on. It's like, <laughs> let me fucking, I'm fucking getting up for this shit. Like, yeah, the day, I'm getting the day. I have a day. The day don't have me. <laughs> I have the day. But the idea that it feels Wait. like that might be predicated on just because it's striking the quarter of me is when Jordan Peterson's talking about how do I like clean my room, I think, or how do I, like, what's one thing I could do to like make this better? You just like start with that one thing and then it's like, you kind of what's the next thing i could do and you just like literally just you started stacking it on top of each other just one after another dude like hold on mm-hmm. now what what else how can i make this more perfect the whole house is clean the dishes are done laundry's done come on like what am i doing here i haven't vacuumed in like a month <laughs> pull the vacuum out of the closet now we're vacuuming and then while you're vacuuming what's what would be my next thing what else could i even fucking do here like you're limited by your own imagination for how much better you can make something yeah yeah and so you have to be you got to get creative you got to express yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fucking right, bro. That's some intention, too. That takes some intention. Yeah. And then then once you realize that, you start realizing that you kind of want to have dope things you have to do. Or things, if the things that I had to do were things that I like to do, and it was true, my life would be lit. And we tried to, like, align it that way. We still do. We're doing podcasts, obligatory, studio mm. sessions. All We're, like, we're doing it bro we're doing it bro it's happening it's fucking awesome it's right there 
She shout out fucking passion. Out now. Bumping. Shout out. Everybody listening to that. Yeah. Bumping. We just released three new songs that you can check out on all streaming platforms. All platties. YouTube. Video platforms. There's not videos for them, but the songs are out there. Yeah, not yet. Three different songs, three different vibes. We're going to have some merch. We're going to have some merch coming. Justin's wearing the shirt right now. Merch. Uh, if you could, go ahead and give us a bump. Give us a listen. Find us somewhere. Tell us what you like. Holler at us. Holler. I love you at guys. At your boys. Please. Passion. Out now. Yeah, we're doing all of that, bro. Fucking just making your life obligatorily. Because you have to, you have to like, it'd be, wouldn't it be ideal if you loved the things that you had to do and then you, the things that you had to do. Or loved to do the things that you had to do. I got, I got lost in my own thought, but you, but you said it. Earlier. I was trying to I was trying to A B and then B A your thought. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> if you, you know what I'm saying? Had to do the things you loved. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, either way, yeah. If you're able to, because there are things in life that you have to fucking do. We've talked about it before. Dishes, laundry, groceries. You have to fucking do it. You have to fucking do it. Even if it's not you, you have to delegate it to somebody to do it. Like it has to get done. <laughs> laundry, groceries, dishes. And then, so those are things like whatever else you have to live. You have to live. There are things you have to do, and then there are also things that like you have to, or you have to do in your free time. I guess if you ever have any leisure time or things that you want to do, things that you wish you could do, and then if you're able to like fucking form those together, like just meld those trees together till it's one fucking mighty oak, and then that, that's your that's that's your shit. That's it. That would be nice. And those things, whatever that is, whatever I'm talking about, I could, it's hard to describe it. Like, yeah, that, that thing that you wish you could do or you wanted to do, where's that coming from? Whatever that thing is, like that fucking God put a little intention. Whatever your intention is, whatever that fucking thing is, who knows? Some, everyone's got something. At least I, I believe so. Yeah. Inspiration. Something, what motivates and inspires you? You know what I'm saying? Who do you want to be like? What's your truest expression of yourself, of like your true soul, like a childish expression? That's typically where it starts from, right? Like that guy was talking about in that yeah. podcast you were talking about. The embers of our the, childhood, childhood embers. Yeah. yeah. Yes. What were those? Mm-hmm. What were you into? I, I think we're able to express it in that stage of our life because we're so much more free, I guess. Though the, the stipulations aren't there quite yet. Oh. We're just like, we're just like when you're a baby, there's z- zero. You don't even know who you are. You're That's shitting. Crazy. You're just shitting yourself. And then slowly but surely, you just add more and more and more and more and more until that's your life or your personality. That was beautiful. <laughs> it's so true. Right? right? Like the whole time, we're talking about removing these limiters of authenticity. When you ever seeing a kid not be authentic, you know? That's what kids do. They, they can't help it. Yeah. They can't. They're to a fault. They're authentic. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll gain some, they'll gain some anxiety and some mm-hmm. sadness and some shit that'll... Like that happens, you know what I'm Anxiety, saying? Anxiety, shame, guilt, fear. Yeah, all that stuff will come with life for sure. Mm-hmm. And you don't really know how to fight it off. You don't even know what it is. You just feel bad. Yeah. You know? Dread. Oh. You ever had a, some <laughs> bad dread? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> it's like you don't want to take a test or you don't want to go to school for a particular reason. It's like, oh, I'm going to fucking bomb that test or, oh my God, like, I, I know I'm in trouble. I, can't, I don't want to go home because I'm in trouble because I talked to my fucking family about or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever dreadful moment you had as a kid growing up related to, to any any situation. Those emotions are fucking, it's honest, subconsciously. They're fucking there somewhere in the in the zeros and ones that project this 3D image for, for me and for you and for everyone who has their own individual projection of their 3D image. It's like all of us have their own, our own individual ones and zeros that have been influenced and affected through our experience through childhood or since childhood. That's where it all starts. Or, of course, obviously. Like, you're born, and then you fucking grow. But then, what happens? What happens there? You just get older. And then... The war. We become, the yeah. The fucking war right? The war happens. for your soul. Yeah. Your mental the state. the soul of everybody spirit, around you. Your ego, your soul. Yeah. The flesh. The flesh. Dude. Yeah, that's one thing I conceptualize super hard is that I just think that there's that's what's going on here. Because I don't think God intends for bad things to happen. I don't think he wants people in horrible situations. And he is omniscient and everywhere and in control and did design this. But there's just a war going on. There's a war going on. There's a war going on. 
So we're, we're right at that one hour mark. Yeah, we're like right at an hour. There's we got more going on. like ten minutes left, less than. Yeah, I got about like five, five or so. Dude, we went ham. We went ham. Yeah, we were touching some shit right there, y'all. We were touching some things. That's a little. That's a little out there. I feel kind of bad I for love, some of our listeners. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's what the pod's about. Sometimes we don't get to talk about the current events because we're just. I think sometimes we just get inhabited by the spirit of truth hmm. and we just say things hmm. or we just talk until that spirit of truth comes out sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Briefly, we're like, oh, that was it. It took a whole bunch of like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A whole yeah. bunch of articulation with our vocal cords and then eventually we get to something that's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 fucking caveman. Yeah, dude. That's how I felt when I was talking about uh, the thing that I couldn't express when we were having beers talking about psychedelics mm-hmm. was like that my capacity to understand my life grew. And that's what makes it make sense to me as a whole. I couldn't like quite, it was too much for me in that moment to be like, this is what I think it's good for. But then here with you getting down to the thing, I was like, that's what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. Those are the words that point towards the thing that I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. About, about that express. subject. Or express. Yeah. yeah my yeah. truth. Yes. 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 Because the truth is hard. That's how I articulate my truth. Yeah. Like, I, I check that off. It's like, that's, it's good. Like, you know what I'm like we'll fucking send it through. So. Yeah. Yeah. We can, now I can relax. I said what I meant to say. Yeah. Before it's like, I'm trying to, uh, what do I want to say here? What do I believe? I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Dur? Take a look at the help section in your Alexa app. Dur? Alexa, breaking, breaking electronics over We're here. Where's breaking the electronics? Send EMPs out. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Either way, passion's out. Give it a listen. New pods dropping all the time. Every week. We got some guests coming on, I'm sure, soon. Coming in the next month, we got some shit dropping in September. Hitting the ground running, y'all. It's fantasy football time is right around the corner, too. I'm sure we'll be talking about that in the next coming weeks. Can't help it. Back to school is happening. Life is great. Back to school. Put in your work. I'm rooting for you. We're rooting for you. You got this shit. You Let's got go. this shit. One at a time. Get bucks. One, Get bucks. One buck in front of the other. Whatever that is. You gotta study. You gotta fucking bag some groceries. You gotta sell some shoes. You gotta sell some insurance. Get a fucking buck. Okay? <laughs> Love y'all. Love. Like, comment, subscribe, share. See you on the other side. Peace. Bye. Rolling through the city to the line.